Hey guys, what's up? Lou in here at GarageBand and beyond with a really interesting and quick demo of the main differences between a condenser microphone and a dynamic microphone. So far, you've been listening to me through my good old Shure SM57. Everyone should have one of these and probably does if you don't run out and buy one because they are amazing and cheap. And the other microphone that I'm using is one of my favorite condenser microphones. This is the CAD Audio E100S. Great microphone, extremely quiet, uh, you know, lowest noise floor on the market in its price range. E100S, cool microphone, that's it. So. One of the things um, that I see a lot online is that people don't seem to comprehend one of the main differences between a dynamic and a condenser, which is how they interact with the environments that they are in, okay? So like I said, so far you've been listening to the SM57, but right now I am gonna switch over to the E100S and you should hear a big difference as far as the amount of spillage or you know room reverb coming back to the microphone, the condenser is going to get a lot more of this room reverb compared to the dynamic microphone, okay? So this dynamic microphone, you know, like I said, it's the SM57, you gotta have one of these things if you don't because they're just an industry standard. The SM in all of these Shure microphones stands for Studio Microphone. So don't think it's some cheap, crappy thing, very good microphone to own. But the big thing is for you guys out there watching this video is if you are recording in your you know, kitchen or your living room, your bedroom, wherever you may be with a condenser microphone and then when you listen back to those recordings, if you're listening and like, oh man, there's so much of this weird like room sound, there's so much extra artifacts in this tone that you just do not want, especially in like a vocal and stuff, it's really nice to have a good dry vocal for most cases. Sometimes the room sounds cool, um, but if this is your issue, okay, and you're using a condenser microphone, I highly recommend that you try, at very least, give it a shot, just plugging in a good old fashioned dynamic microphone and checking out the difference, okay? So the physical properties of these two microphones are obviously very different, but the main one that I'm really talking about is the proximity effect of these two, the differences, okay? So like I was saying before, they interact with the environments that they're in very differently. So I'm just gonna do two really quick, simple, normal things that you do when you're in a studio. And I'm gonna count and I'm gonna clap my hands. And so you should really be able to hear the difference when I do that, so let's just try it, okay? So this is with the E100. One, two, three, four, five. This is the SM57. One, two, three, four, four, five. Okay, I'm gonna take a step back, and clap my hands. E100. SM57. Okay, so that should have hopefully been pretty obvious to you. Now, of course, you are still hearing a lot of the room reverb from my SM57, but that's because I'm in this long hallway. I wanted to use this, um, this space just to give you the most, this is the most echoey room, I think, in my, in my house. So I wanted to you know, use this as a demo just so you could hear. So of course, you're still gonna hear some of this room reverb coming back in through the 57, but point is, you should be hearing a lot less. So if you are in your bedroom or your living room, which is most likely not as echoey as this space I'm in right now, um, this difference will be more obvious to you, okay? So that's pretty much it, you guys. I just wanna remind you, you know, check out your good old fashioned dynamic microphones. I think, you know, like a lot of home recording studio guys, you get all into the gear and you get into like, you know, these fancy microphones and stuff. But if your space hasn't been treated properly, you sort of, eh, I don't know if you get like the whole deal. Like if you spend a bunch of money on an expensive mic and then you just stick it in your living room that has no, you know, acoustic treatment. Like, I don't know if there's a ton of a point to that, you know, um, I would say you'd probably be better off with a 57 or an SM7B or even the good old SM58, you know, there's a reason that these microphones are industry standard and it's because they're extremely versatile, extremely good at what they do. And I just wanted to remind you guys to check out your dynamic microphones because everybody gets all like, oh, I gotta have a condenser, I gotta have a condenser. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dynamic mics are great and don't, mm -mm. dynamic mics are great and just don't forget about them. They're good machines. 
they're good mics. They record, like, especially the 57, you can do guitars and voices and pianos. They're super versatile. Um, so that's it, you guys. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And of course, please check out all my other videos here on GarageBand and Beyond. I got over 270 of them, I think, at this point. I've been here for a long time doing this for a long time. I really appreciate your support. And please spread the word about my channel by hitting that share button and like and all that junk. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day. All right. Peace.